Uh, Wait, give me, okay. Go ahead. It's all right. Don't worry about it. Hey, how you doing? There we go. A little relaxing music. Happy Super Bowl to everybody out there. We actually got some friends over today. We're having a, a lot of food, a lot of good drinks, and a lot of football, which just started a little while ago. I know the score right now is 0-0, zero, zero, but it's looking like it's going to be an exciting game. Other than that, I'd like to welcome everybody to the show. I am Mr. Poseidon, my lovely wife. Hon, you want to put that camera on? Because I don't even know which one it is. Is this one? There you go. Yeah, she's sitting in a different chair tonight. We still got it up for the four group setup we had up. So we said, ah, yeah, go ahead. Just hang out over there tonight. How you doing, honey? Great. <laughs> Who's on the show tonight, <laughs> sweetheart? We have the very popular Stripe Bass Hunt, Finn Hawley. That's right. Finn Hawley's going to be on tonight. It's always exciting when that guy's on. That guy is a young cat, and he's full of knowledge, man. It's amazing. I love his videos. I love the way he shoots them. Just a lot of good, fun action. And a lot of times, and when I say a lot, it's a lot of times a big fish the guy is always on. He's been hustling the tarpon right now. I know he loves fishing those fish. I was speaking to him a little bit about that yesterday. We'll talk a little bit about that. But also I want to talk about this weekend's uh, show. Hun. On my phone I have the information. You want to read that off? And we're going to have uh, Dominic, that's the president of, you're going to read that off? Yeah, so Dominic is the yeah. Jersey Shore Surf into, Casters. Into, into the speaker, into it. Yes. Yes, okay. yeah. Go ahead. <laughs> He's the president of Jersey Shore Surf Casters. They are having Surf Day this Saturday, February 17th. From 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. at Brookdale Community College in Lynn Cross, New Jersey. We'll put the address in the description. They have their Facebook page. If you look up Surf Day, the Jersey <coughs> Shore Surf Casters, all the show info will be there. So we'll put that link as well. Absolutely. So I think he's going to be on the yeah, phone. Yeah, we'll so in a little while, uh, even if he wants to call right now... Uh, Dominic, uh, we're standing by for you. If you want to give us a call, just going to ask you a few questions on this weekend's show, which I'm going to be a part of also. I'm going to have a booth there. I can't wait for that. It's going to be a lot of fun. Get your butts down there if you can. That's always a good show to be at. So, you got my phone, honey? Yeah, put on the uh, road. Yes, I will. Road is on, Bluetooth is on, we're ready to go. Dominic, where are you? I'm right here. Ah, there, there he is. is. <laughs> we got him right on. All right. Like Good, e Good evening, gentlemen and ladies. Good evening, buddy. How are you? The only thing I'm going to ask you is if you can just lower, I think you got the game on in the back. Or, or the live stream. Or the live stream. I can hear it. That's why. Is that better now? Yep. Perfect. 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 Thank you, Dominic. Dominic. You got it. Yes. What, what's going on, buddy? How are you? We're doing good so far. Um, right. Like you said, we're getting ready for the show. Right. Uh, so it's this upcoming Saturday. Yes. Um, a lot to do. Um, come all. It's uh, We have great speakers. Uh, we have over 80 vendors. And we've been there um, at this uh, venue over almost 14 years. Wow. That's pretty cool, Dominic. I like yes. that. I know when I first was talking to you uh, last year, I didn't get to make it, but uh, this year I said I wanted to come, and here I am. I'm coming. Can't wait. Looking uh, forward to it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dominic, I know there's a lot of Delaware fishermen that also come up from to that show, correct? Um, it, it's a, one of the bigger shows on the East Coast. Right. Um, you know, we take a uh, very proud to put this show on right. for uh, right. all. And um, we went up to Rhode Island in uh, the past couple of years to uh, their surf day. So uh, I think a bunch of their guys, like Bruce, are supposed to be coming down. Yep. Maybe even Billy the Greek. Um, so looking forward to anybody that wants to come down. Sounds awesome, man. Sounds like a good, good uh, time. Dominic, <clears throat> if people wanted to, just finding out about it, what do they have to do to know what they need, what they have to do to get down there to you? Well, um, like Rohit said, um, if you go to Facebook, 
you look up Surf Day, the Jersey Shore Surfcasters, and all the information will be on there. Um, our guest seminar speakers are Crazy Alberto Nee, John Skinner, Bill Wetzel, Nick Honoszewski, Frank and Calvez, Comanche Surfcasting, Dave Anderson, Russ Summers, and Matt Risser. Wow. Yeah, man, that's a, that's nice an all star uh, all star lineup, no doubt about it. Uh, maybe next year you can get in touch with Mr. Finn Hawley and even make it better. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, good guy. Uh, you'll hear him tonight on the uh, on the live tonight. And uh, looking forward to that. Yep, yep, no doubt. Uh, Dominic, anything else that you would like to add? Maybe I forget. I don't <clears throat> know. So. Yeah. So um, also because we want to give back to the community um, through the Fulfill Food Bank. If you bring in four non-perishable uh, food items, and the listing will be on our uh, page, there's a flyer for it. Um, you'll get one entry into a uh, to get a combo: a pen spin fish, a pen uh, pen spin fisher, 4500, and a jigging world 10 foot onyx surf rod, valued at 330. Nice, nice, nice. So we Always. also have door prizes. Um, the first paid hundred will have get a commemorative sticker. And uh, we also have T-shirts for purchase. Um, those go pretty fast, so that's first come, first serve on those. There you go, guys. There you have it. Uh, also, bring your monies to get <laughs> in and bring your monies to get your uh, lures and all your gear that uh, you've been uh, waiting to get your hands on. New Jersey show is a good one, as you can hear just from the guest speakers that they have. It's going to be a... Fantastic <coughs> rocking show, Dominic. Yes, <coughs> thank you very much. Uh, you for got coming it, buddy. on tonight. Uh, My can't, pleasure. Yeah, can't <coughs> wait to see you Saturday. We'll have even a better time then. Hundred percent. And, and uh, keep it cool, man. Keep fishing, doing what you're doing. I know you're a good guy. We fished together before with the rest Thanks. of the Jersey boys. There, I like to call them. Yes. Thank you <coughs> so much for all you do for the community, and uh, we will talk again very, very soon this week. And again. Thank you for being on the live tonight. I appreciate you. Thank you for having me, as always. And you guys are the best. Thank you for doing what you do. You keep us going. Looking forward to the new season coming up and uh, bringing some fish. Thank you, buddy. Thank you so Catch much. Catch them up. You have a great night, man. Thank you. You too, guys. Bye. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye. Bye. Why don't you put me on the show more? You put everybody on the show but me. He's oh. not there. All right, guys. Here we go. Let's get on over to Finn Hawley. He's been waiting on the sidelines. Finn, how you doing, buddy? What's going on? Good to see you on the show again. My wife's just getting you on screen right now. There you go. Go ahead, honey. Yeah. Flip him over. Awesome. How you doing, buddy? Thanks for having me back on. I'm yeah, glad, man. Uh, glad to be here tonight and looking forward to talking fishing. That's right, buddy. Me too. I heard enough of football all day, cooking hot dogs, <laughs> hamburgers, <laughs> fried wings. Right, honey? I did yes, everything today. Oh I was God. like... Stopped eating we haven't day. stopped eating, man. I don't want to talk food, <laughs> at least for a little while. So halftime. Yeah. yeah. Right. So anyhow. Yeah, it won't even be halftime by the time this is over. <laughs> yeah, I know. You're right. That's okay. Oh, man. It's all good, Finn. No worries, buddy. So. It says, Mr. Wait, Delco just said, yeah. Mr. P, we can't hear you. You're too far from the mic. Really? Who is that, me or you? It says, Mr. P. Mr. P, wait a second. Really? Am I good right now? Can you hear me? Does it sound like I'm far now? Just making sure. How about now? Testing, testing. We are testing the mic. Go up a little more, hon. Up, up, up. Up a little more. Okay, that's good. All right, guys, so how is it now? Can somebody tell me? Yeah, yeah, Delco Joe says that's better. Yeah, don't touch those buttons, honey. My wife likes to touch the buttons. <laughs> it could be the stereo it. at home. It could be the AC. <laughs> Everything always has to be lowered. The volume on the TV, make it lower. The, the, the sink is running too fast. Lower the volume of the sink. Too much shower being run. Lower the shower. What do you mean lower the shower? I don't get it. <laughs> anyway, it's all good. Oh my it's God. all, all good. So, Finn, I got you back on the show. I was dying to get you back on the show. Many people always ask me, oh, I missed him last time. Aww. Can you get him back on? Blah, blah, blah. Yeah, sure, I'll get him back on. Here he is, Mr. Finn. Here I am. That's right. <laughs> so, I want to talk to you a little bit about 
the fishing. We've talked about in the past how you started and all that. If people have been following and watching and even watch the rerun, they know those stories. I like to get in a little bit of talk about uh, fishing. Number one, striped bass season isn't quite here yet for some of us. I know some people are getting on them, holdovers, uh, resident fish, so on. But I want to ask you, what have you been fishing for right now? Because I know I've been seeing a little bit of tarpon in the action. Yeah, so that's actually just footage that I've had okay. from the last time I was down there this past spring. Uh, but I, I'm really happy to be able to have a lot of this archive stuff that I can pull back. And obviously, tarpon are such a crazy cool fish. So it's it's always cool to see them fly out of the water. And uh, yeah, it's awesome to share that that footage again with you with you all. You know, tarpon is a tough fish. I hear most of the time people say, yeah, you know, I get on him, but I can't get him in. Tough, tough fish, yeah. man. What a battle. Want to tell oh me a little gosh. bit about that fish that people don't know about? Yeah, I, I think, you know, they, to me, it seems like they're probably the ultimate game fish that you can actually target from shore in the United States. I don't know if they're of anything else that you could probably hook from shore that's going to give you a better fight or a more spectacular fight with it just being such a big fish that just flies out of the water it's it's a blast to target them but uh yeah i mean they're it is one of those things that's like it is their mouths are made out of like metal it's unbelievable yeah, right. how powerful well how powerful but how strong their mouths are you can hook set as many times as you want yeah, and yeah that hook just bounces off them like it's nothing. So you got to get – there's a lot of luck involved if you're wanting to land one and right. especially land a big one because they get so big that yes. it's really hard to are hard on your tackle because they really test everything. And last year when I was fishing for them, I figured out that the weakest link was the, actually the hook that I was using. And I had the hardest time finding a hook that wouldn't bend out, especially on those tarpon that were – like 100 plus pounds sure, because sure. they're just such a beast of an animal i've watched uh fishaholic go down in florida and he'd be uh battling mm -hmm. some topping but nothing big the the little fish the little topping are just they give you a battle right there i was watching them fly out of the water just a, a yeah. really a fun fish i went down last year to florida it really wasn't the season for tarpon, so we went for the permit and the cobia. I had a nice, uh, nice thirty pound cobia that day. Great time, but awesome. uh, again in, in in Florida, what you know? I've watched you, you know, growing up or watching you over the couple of years. You know, I watched yep. you battle the striped bass. It seems that your that your uh, fish a passion. Uh, I know you're in the New England area, correct up there. Yeah, yes, I am. Yeah. yeah. So I'm um, about, I live on Cape Ann, Massachusetts, which is about an hour north of Boston. And we have an awesome little fishery in Boston, or like north of Boston, because we have rocks, we got beaches, we got estuaries. So there's a little bit of everything that we can fish while we're trying to target these striped bass. And it's really awesome because we do get, when the fish are in our season compared to people like ourselves of us, like you in New York, where right. you have a little bit longer of a season. Yes. Ours is really hot and heavy for that spring, summer months. And then again, in the fall, it's really, really hot and heavy for us. So that's, it's, it's a great place to fish for sure. Everybody prepares to go for striped bass fishing. What do I mean by prepare your gear? So everybody pretty much likes to have their gear ready. Everybody loves to talk about the, the big fish, but sometimes you have to be careful guys. You can't go out there with a, 10 pound leader hunting for a 50 pound striped bass. <clears throat> Maybe if you were the best fisherman in the world, you might have a chance of bringing it in and breaking some kind of record, but that is not going to happen. So I want to ask you, Finn, when you go out fishing for these, now surf fishing, not off a boat, just surf fishing, not even off a, a, a jetty, just off the rocks, beach, what's your primary gear when you go attack or when you go hunt for the striped bass? Yeah, so last year I fished a lot of the Century rods. I'm a huge fan of their rods right now. I really feel like they probably have the best rods on the market. They're using a lot of that like top of the line materials. Their rods are very light and and powerful rods, and that's what really makes me love them. I fish a lot of smaller rods that are in that nine foot range, yeah. and the reason I fish a lot of smaller rods is because I don't need a ton of casting distance. 
And I tend to work a lot of smaller lures, like small pencils and spooks. And when I mean smaller, I'm talking like four to like seven inch long lures for the most part. So I like to have a smaller rod because it makes it a little bit easier for me to be able to work those lures. So I was fishing the century weapon a lot this past season. That was probably the nine foot century weapon was the rod that I was using the most this year. And I had that paired on a Vanstall VSX Gen 2 150. And that's an amazing little setup there. You can fight huge bass. Like I caught some really, really nice bass in that this year. And I fished that for a couple of years now, that setup. And it, it has unbelievable backbone. You can turn a bass if you're in the rocks, which is where I fish a ton. But it's a light enough rod that I can really work the lures well. And yeah, I mean, the, the reel is a great reel. I know there's been... It's a new reel on the market being that, that Gen 2 van stall, but it's a very nice reel. It's definitely a smoother reel. It has a lot of good, it's good drag. It's very powerful reel as well. So you can tighten down, have, you'll have a little bit more drag than you would on the older models. So yeah, that's my, my setup. And I have that on the reel. I have 30 pound Power Pro Max Quattro, which I attach with a Spro barrel swivel, which I believe is like a 135 pound test barrel swivel barrel swivel to a 40 uh or 30 pound well i guess like 40 or 30 pound liter of blue label cigar and that's to a 75 pound tactical english clip so that's like the setup that i would be running from top to bottom right so okay so i know that uh uh you mentioned many times in uh that i always see the videos you're always on uh fishing with lures uh plugs uh, bucktails. Do you do any like uh, live bait thing or any kind of chunk? Do you do that? Yeah. So I feel like, like everyone, my natural progression as an angler, I started out chunking off yep. the beaches on Cape Ann. Yep. And as I got more into it, I started to fish more and more lures and got further away from fishing the bait side of things. However, I will use live eels from time to time to target striped bass Beautiful. and live eels really just take the guessing part out of what the bass are feeding on, what lure do I have to use to match what the bass are feeding on. So I I do use live eels, especially if I'm exploring a new area or trying to figure out a bite. That's a great time to use live eels. But as far as bait goes, at my my current stage, that's basically all I use for bait is live eels. Sure. Yeah, live eels is a uh, uh, dynamite uh, bait to use, and I always believe... It's like a Twizzler to uh, striped bass because I love Twizzlers, so <laughs> yeah. that's the way it goes. And I've seen Twizzlers being fished out in Montauk, believe it or not, and I've seen stripers being caught on Twizzlers. No way. Yes, yes. Fisherholic did it on uh, on, uh, on Twizzlers, <laughs> yeah. Anyhow, wild. yeah, I know, it is wild. Uh, really quick, just to say hello to some people. Let me get the reading glasses on. <laughs> All right, there it is. Bruce Bain, Mattatuck. Mantucket, uh, Matunic, Matunic. Matunic Surf Rat. <laughs> I always get that wrong. How you doing, Bruce? What's going on, buddy? Churchwood. Hey, how you doing, Big Sister of Wolf? How you doing, Big Sis? Nice to meet you. Uh, welcome to the show. John McDowell, what's going on, buddy? Good to see you. Always a uh, pleasure to have John on the show. And last week's winner, you're going to get your product sent out this week, brother. Thanks so much that and uh, for supporting Tom Hood is out there uh, and G Carl Newman every year the least amount of people I always have seems to be on the Super Bowl maybe that's because <laughs> the Super Bowl and my live stream start together but it's a beautiful thing that I do have friends and real supporters on here that come on to the show and also you yourself thank you for coming to the show today Mr. Hawley I appreciate you very much thank you all right, so, yep. So let's go back to Finn. We're I want to ask. We're gonna be getting snow. It's been so warm. I now know. We're gonna be getting snow. Now we're gonna be getting snow. Oh. What the yeah. hell? What are the fish gonna do? Well, they're gonna make sure that they got their shovels and they clean the <laughs> surf lines for us to fish for them. But other than that, all right. Let's get back to Finn again. Finn, I like to ask you a couple of uh, specific questions, such as when you go out fishing, and let's talk nights now. Uh, what is your favorite lore on the night fishing night? I know that there's different things we can talk about. Full moon, new moon, uh, depending on the outgoing tide. 
in in coming, uh, what people are actually hitting them on, but specifically, what is your favorite lure when you go out there? What do you prefer to use? Ooh, that is a a loaded question. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> because uh, there's so many great lures yeah. out there that I I love using. And I have a ton of confidence in. Uh, you know, so I I actually have my own. Uh, line of lures that I work with Pumbaa plugs went on sure. and one of them is a metal up swimmer and that's a great I mean absolutely fantastic plug for when you have big bass that are feeding on big like white bait like mackerel or herring or even like Atlantic Menhaden like that's a great lure that I love to throw just big metal up swimmers and that's not even really a big metal up swimmer like, but having like a six inch metal up sw swimmer like that is just so much fun right. to to fish uh, I do have to say though I fished a ton of soft plastics this past season and I would say that the straight tail soft plastics were rivaling live eels for how many fish I was catching on them I mean I was very impressed uh, there's a few companies that make a, some great uh, straight tail soft plastics. Zinger Baits is one that I've, yeah. I've fished a ton, and yeah. I love those. Um, and then there's other ones like, uh, uh, what is it called? BKD soft plastics. Yep. Uh, I started fishing those a bit this, this past uh, season as well at night. And man, the bass just, when they're being really picky and they're not hitting a lot of plugs, yeah. those straight tail soft plastics have such realistic presentation yes. to them that the bass just they really love them yep yep that's uh that's a fact i love fishing plastics at night uh the longer the better i feel sometimes uh, i fish some uh again zinger baits 11 inches uh, uh bomba shads you know uh excited yeah. excited tail it's just it's it's beautiful man i love that stuff it works and i catch fish with it so i believe in those plastics not that any metal lips or any kind of spoof or any kind of plug, a pencil, whatever you want, a, a needle fish. Everything is good. There's always a time and a place for everything. But you mentioned that sometimes when they're not hitting those plugs, uh, a plastic sure can uh, help out. A lot of times it can uh, help out. Um, Delco yeah. Joe is asking uh, Finn. It says, ask him what size gear you need to handle big jacks. Ooh. Okay, so I'll just preface this by saying that I'm 100% not an expert when it comes to Florida fishing. Um, okay. I I think that definitely you want bigger real sizes when you're dealing with and heavier gear in general when you're dealing with fish that are pelagic fish or tropical fish that get really big and powerful. So, I mean, I would be fishing 5,000 sized reels and minimum probably 50 pound braid on that. And then finding a rod that has really good backbone and can you can really stop a big fish like that. And something that has smooth drag as well is going to help you. So, yeah, anything like that would be would be great. But, like, I'm, again, no expert when it comes to the whole Florida fishing world. So just preface it by saying that. Yeah, yeah, no doubt about it. Anybody feel free to ask <clears throat> any questions. We got Finn Hawley here. That's Stripe Bass Hunt. There'll be a link at the end of this video on the bottom, how to reach him. Uh, I want to ask you now, we're going to just jump to subject just a little bit. I mm -hmm. know you got something new going on, the broadcast channel. Can you yeah. explain that a little bit to us on what is going on with that? Yeah, I mean, uh, broadcast, I guess, is, is just like a new feature on Instagram. And it's kind of like a blog or like a newsletter for instagram it comes through your dms so basically what i've been doing is kind of using it as and as the season gets going i'm going to use it more as almost like a fishing log where i'm going to like write down stuff that's happening throughout the season whether that is fishing related things or just maybe projects that i'm working on and give you more updates on that so if you're interested in maybe finding out a little bit more about what i'm doing from day to day uh, you can go okay. onto my Instagram and right in the bio, you'll be able to see broadcast and you can join that broadcast channel. It's, it's a pretty fun place nice. for sure. There you go, man. Uh, I appreciate that. Uh, Hey man, anything that helps the community grow is uh, always a positive thing. Uh, glad everybody's here tonight. I know in spite, we have the Super Bowl going on right now 
and uh, yeah. a lot of people are out having a good time, and I don't blame them. That's a good time <laughs> to be around. I know Orlando, NorCal Cat, who I'm wearing his uh, shirt right now, his uh, hoodie, he's out in Vegas right now. He's enjoying that with a bunch of people over there. <clears throat> Anyhow, uh, going back again to striped bass, I love hunting striped bass, you know, full time beach season, uh, later spring, you know, the south side of Montauk, some of my favorite places to uh, hunt the fish. I know in the summer times it gets a little tough. The hot weather brings up the sharks. Now we get a lot of sharks all over uh, Long Island, but there's still the fun times of, uh, you know, fluke. You know, blackfish, uh, rockfish, uh, whatever you want to call them, tog. Do you do any of that kind of fishing, Ben? No, I'm kind of just like a, a one-trick pony. Other than going to Florida, I really am basically striped bass sure. specific. And then I do obviously catch some bluefish from time to time targeting the striped bass. But, yeah, there's it's mostly, mostly bass for sure. Very cool. So I got to ask you again, going back, now we're going to talk about uh, striped bass again. And I want to ask... So you're going out, you know, and again, everybody's objective is to catch that big fish. We all want that big fish, but can you give some people out there some tips, <clears throat> what, you know, what they should be doing, what they should be looking for? Is there a time and a place to hunt these things? When I say these things, I'm talking about the big puppies, the big fish, the cows. <laughs> what do you put, what do you have in your mind where you're saying, you know what, I'm going out, or is it just... Let's cast out and see what we get. Yeah, I mean, I think that the biggest thing, especially if you're trying to catch your first 40, 45, even maybe a 50-inch bass, the, the main thing that I really focus on is fishing with intention. So I want to have an idea or a game plan in place for why I'm picking a certain spot to fish. And I want to have certain conditions that are going to maximize my, my potential to catch the biggest fish possible and there's obviously like habits that these striped bass will follow but definitely if you're trying to just get your first real big bass it's just about being consistent and really just going out with a game plan behind why you're fishing right and there's again there's a lot of things you can do i mean we talked about the live eels piece of it and finding like a big one for me is finding cool clean water throughout the summer if you can find water that's nice and cool and clean, there's yeah. a, a lot of the time it's going to be where those big fish are wanting to stay jumping. Yeah, you guys hear that, man. That's some good little info right there. And that, that's, and that just doesn't mean his area. That means everybody. Nice, cool water, <clears throat> clean. Uh, you know, it's what the fish like, striped bass like uh, clean water. Their eyesight is not the best, so clean water is what they prefer. Also, I'd like to say some more hellos out there. Bill Jacob, how you doing, buddy? Good to see you. Uh, hope you're having a, a good one out there. We'll be fishing again very soon. Outfish, all outfitters, how you doing? Delco Joe, I said hello. Brian, Brian, RGQ, RJQC, how you doing, buddy? He's the gentleman, guys, if you don't know. He makes those wonderful cutting boards with the striped bass emblem on it or uh, just the picture of a striped bass burnt into the cutting board. I mean, man, does that look good. I actually have one over there. I should have had it here to show you. But uh, Brian will be on the show uh, coming up very soon, and we'll be giving away that board on the show. Other than that, if you want to see what I'm talking about, please go to his uh, Instagram account. I'll leave a link on the bottom. Write that down, honey. We'll leave a link on the bottom at the end of this video. And you can go and check out Brian's stuff there uh, just for yourself to see. Excellent. Thank you, Brian, for always your support. Fishing with Vinny. Fishing with Vinny is up in the canal. How you doing, Vinny? Good to see you. He's always a nice guest on the show, and he makes some nice videos. You can check him out on YouTube. Uh, he's got a nice connection up in the canal, a group of guys that he works with. And uh, they got a seven-mile stretch of canal there, so they work it, and they work as a team, and hopefully one of the guys can get on them and call the rest of them down there so they, too, can have a chance for that elusive big striped bass that we all want to catch. Frank! Frank Azevedo! How you doing? Frank Azevedo is in uh, California. 
Frank Azevedo is with the group uh, Fish Gone Wild. Uh, Striper, Striper. Striper's Gone, gone Wild, wild. <laughs> sorry. Yeah, he's been on the show before. Frank, thanks for coming. Thanks for the support. Frank's always got some good stuff going on. We'll leave a link at the bottom of this uh, video also for Frank Azevedo, and that's uh, Striper's Gone Wild. Good stuff. Lot, lots of tournaments for kids. He does the right thing. Yes. Matter Custom Lures, how you doing, buddy? Welcome to the show. Good to see you. Uh, we're here with uh, Finn Hawley today. We're talking stripers. We're talking a little bit of other fish, too. But uh, striper is the main game, what we all love to hunt. So I want to bring that back again, too. <clears throat> you don't have to be a super technician. No, you do. You have to understand when to hunt these things. You know, um, I want to say I want to say so many things. Charlie from Rhode Island always said, learn your areas. Learn your areas. Learn your areas. Know what you're doing when you go out there. You know, if you know your area, you're going to know when best times to hunt them. Keep a log. Uh, it'll give you better chances. But what I love to believe in is the grind. And that doesn't mean going out there once every month and grinding. We watch a lot of Finn Hawley's videos. It's not like he's going out there every single time and he's catching fish. He's shaking his head. He's going, no, I catch fish every time. No, no, no. no I'm kidding. No, you're 100% right. Yeah. yeah, I definitely, I mean, what you're seeing is many, many trips of not catching a lot of big fish to then finally target and, and finally find one of those big fish. And right. it's really tough nowadays because you can do everything right and still not catch big fish. So... Yeah. It's one of those things that, you, to your point, if you love the grind, the people that often are the most successful are the ones that love the grind, love to put their time in, enjoy just being out there fishing for being out there and fishing. And those are the people that oftentimes will end up catching the most big fish. Yeah, no doubt about it, man. I believe in that big time. When I see people consistently posting big fish, it's not consistently posting. They post in between all the times they haven't caught fish. It's a lot of work. It's not like you're going out there and you're feeding a, a group of 100 goldfish. You're dropping in your fish tank. It's not that easy, guys. It requires a lot of work. And I'm going to say skill also because you got to know what you're doing a little bit. You have to. But, again, the grind is very important. You can go out there as a brand-new fisherman, go out there tomorrow night and land the 30, 40-pound fish. It can happen. But if you're not grinding and if you're not knowing tactics on how to hunt these fish, that'll probably be the last 40-pound fish you ever got in your life because it all, it all takes work. Guys, you know, I don't have to tell you, it's not easy. Sometimes we're out there fishing at night and we're not catching anything and it's cold and you're sitting there in the water with your waves and like, what am I doing? But then once that fish hits, it brings it all back on why you're doing this. It's the love, the passion you have for it. That's why you're out there in the cold. That's why you're out there in the rain. That's why you're out there when these storms hit. I get freaky when storms hit. I want to get out there. I like them. It's fun. Just very dangerous, and you always have to think safety first, no matter if it's a nice day or a bad day. Always safety first. Safety, safety, safety. All right, so Delco let's get... Joe f is asking Finn yeah. if he fishes bucktails a lot. This, mm -hmm. this fin fish, yeah. yeah yeah so i i definitely fish a lot of bucktails bucktails are a fantastic way to catch big fish especially when you have like we're talking about big storms that blow through hurricanes are a great time to fish bucktails uh i actually fish them off the rocks a lot and some people are a little scared to fish them off the rocks because you do end up losing them yeah. because you get snagged in the bottom but they're really, really deadly off the rocks, too. And I've caught some very nice bass and bucktails. Yeah, I also got a question coming in from Mario Gandini. Mario Gandini is uh, mug em up bucktails. I don't know if you ever heard. Uh, pretty famous. I've caught uh, quite a few fish on his bucktails. I like his bucktails. Quality stuff, good amount of hair, just good, good uh, product. It says... Awesome. We've seen Finn make plugs he is using as a duplicator. Is he using, is, is he using a duplicator or at all hand-turned plugs? What's his ideal weight and length for his pencil? So basically, two questions. I'll read it again. We've seen ma uh, Finn make plugs he is using as a duplicator or all hand-turned plugs. So I actually, 
don't make plugs. Okay. I work with a guy, Joe Dion of Pumba Plugs, and he is a very talented plug ma- maker. And he does use a duplicator. But before he uses a duplicator, we will tweak things and and make them as as best as possible before we actually start duplicating them and and make them as consistent as possible, which is the best part about having that the duplicator is because you can make the plug super, super consistently. And for me, I really like pencils that are between six and about seven inches and, or I plugs in general, if I'm fishing like top water, this is more like top water specific. I like plugs that are between that like six to seven inch range mm. because, and like two ounces within that, like two to like one and a half ounce size. I like those lighter plugs. I'm a big fan of floating pencils as well. I almost don't fish any sinking pencils because I'm able to apply action to that floating pencil that you can't really do with the sinking one. And you're also able to work it far slower. And you see a lot of people work pencils really quickly. And when you're fishing into a blitz, that can work 100% of the time. But a lot of the time, what you want to do is fish very slow with a pencil because if you fish nice and slow with them especially the really big fish will be more likely to come up and eat them yeah yeah uh i know i've met you in uh, your area before not that you've told me about the area we met we just happened to get lucky i fish a lot of different areas i try di- i go to areas where i've only fished once and that's it and then i'm in another area but uh that that area, I must have said area about 40 times already, but <laughs> that area is so, so nice there, so beautiful. I'm very appreciative to fish there. Uh, I'm always in my best behavior there. There are houses right up on the beach, and these people are sitting on the porch, and you're waving at them. They don't wave back. They just look at you. So <laughs> I try to be as nice as possible there and do the right thing. That's tough. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's for sure. Uh, it's very, very challenging to find areas to fish on Cape Ann. Yeah. And it's one of those places that unless you go with someone like you're fishing with Jason, unless yeah. you go somebody like that who's super knowledgeable about yeah. the area, it's it's tough to find places to fish for sure. Yeah, Jason, uh, very good fisherman, Jason Palmatia. I respect that guy so much. Uh, great family guy. Uh, his uh, son, very smart. Uh, we've all gone fishing together and... I've been very lucky to have him uh, bring me to that area. And like I said, I respect that very much. But great area to fish in. Uh, lots of different sure. ways to fish the stripers there. <clears throat> I've only fished there in the springtime. I don't think I've gone in the uh, fall yet. Maybe this year. We'll see what happens. But uh, they're all different times. Go ahead, honey. Oh, Brooklyn Fishers is asking, Hey, Finn, what month do you start searching for your first bite? <laughs> That's a great question. Um, I start fishing for my first striped bass about the last week of April, first week of May. That's when, like, if you want to catch the first bass that show up on Cape Ann, that's when they're going to first really start showing up on Cape Ann. We don't tend to start to see our bigger class of fish until the end of May, the beginning of June. It Mm -hmm. used to be, like, basically a hard cutoff at June. And if you could catch a bass that was 40 inches before June – that was like wow. super rare. Like you'd rarely hear that happening And this past season that all the rules were broken. And I mean, second week of May, we were catching mid 40 inch class fish, which is just mind blowing, but normally that's not the case. So yeah, I would say last week of April, first week of May, that's when you're going to start seeing the first schoolies show up on Cape Ann. Yeah. Yeah. Good stuff. Uh, I, I know last time I was there when I had saw you, I've seen you a few times there. The first time I was actually shocked, I was like, but you told me you fish in New Jersey. And you go, listen, bro, I got to protect my grounds. Uh-huh. No, I was kidding. I'm kidding. You didn't say, <laughs> that. didn't say that. No, no, no. You're too good of a kid, man. Uh, I remember yeah. I met you with a bunch of your buddies down there uh, that day. Uh, you guys were yeah. all fishing together. I know you got on a few fish. I watched. I was watching you fishing a little down further than me. Nothing big that day. But, again, being in that area, I had some wonderful times there with Jason. And uh, I hope many more to uh, come uh, over there, beautiful area. Guys, no matter where you're fishing out there, please take care of your surroundings, be safe, and always be clean. Don't leave garbage around. Don't make it worse for the rest of us. I want to go fishing there again. 
Just be clean, be cool. It's so easy. We don't have much. We bring one. You bring a sandwich in your pocket. It gets wet. <laughs> you know, don't don't start tossing this stuff around. Always look to be clean. Number one, we and always a, be courteous. Go ahead, honey. I'm sorry. We have a couple of requests. Uh, yeah. For Finn. Antagonizer lures, mad custom lures. Is saying, Finn, tell the story of the video where the boat gets in your <laughs> casting range when you were catching. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. This that is was a great a good story. One, yeah. I mean, for those of you who don't know, um, yeah, I had a video that I posted of me yelling at a boat, which is something I really don't do don't. very often. That was but uh, this is actually a, a pretty fun story. I don't know if I've actually told the whole story to it. Yeah. So yeah. I was at my house, I was working, and I get a call from a lobster fishing friend of mine, and he said, "There's." There's pogies jumping out of the water all around me. What does that mean? And, it's, and I said to him, well, that means that I'm over there right now. So I <laughs> jump in my car and I floor it over to where he was at. And I, I get up to a place where I can actually overlook this area yeah. that he was dropping pots at that day. And so I'm, I'm looking down in the water and there's offshore uh, from basically, I don't know if Oh, I, never mind. But basically from offshore, way offshore, if you know Rockport, there's a breakwater yeah. in Rockport. And there's bass blitzing from shore all the way to the breakwater in Rockport. I mean, it was just – it was mind-blowing how many big fish were there, wow. including there was tuna, bluefin tuna exploding through the middle of these oh. schools. And most of them were offshore. So I'm, I'm looking for a place where maybe these schools of bass had come a little closer to shore. And I yeah. saw in this one spot there was a pod of bass – pushing closer to shore. So I dump my car, I run down this path, I run probably 200 yards across the rocks. Wow. And I, there's this tiny little pot of fish that's maybe 25 yards wide. Yeah. And I, I get up to the, to where those fish are, I catch up to them. And I take one cast into the school and I have giant, like mid 40 inch bass, knocking the plug out of the water, tangling it, the whole bit. It's, it's like all tangled out of big, uh, the hokey, yeah. dog walker xl i was using okay. and it gets all tangled and i reel that in i cast it back out again it's getting knocked out of the water and then like a relatively small bass out of that school ate it and i end up hooking into that fish and fighting it now meanwhile while i hook into that fish there's a boat that's probably over a thousand yards offshore and they're running over the tops of these schools of feeding fish just running right over the top of them and they saw me hook up and start fighting this fish and they weren't catching anything because they, they didn't know what they were doing. They're throwing mackerel chunks of frozen mackerel into the schools of fish, trying to get them to eat. Sure. And then I think maybe using a popper as well, but that's what they were trying to do to get those bass to eat. And, uh, they then saw me hook up and they drove all the way from a thousand yards away, straight on shore and over the top of the really small school of fish that was close enough for sure for me to even cast into. Right. And immediately those fish went down and, yeah. and swam away and they're casting over it and didn't catch anything. And so I, I land this fish and I'm like, I'm fuming at this point because it'd been a pretty tough patch for me. I probably had two week span where I wasn't catching a whole yeah, lot of big I know. bass. I don't like that. Yep. And so I, I got really upset, but I, I acknowledged the fact that they probably didn't understand what they were doing. And so when I was yelling at them, I wasn't yelling at them as meanly as I probably could have, but I was basically telling them yeah. like behind them, there's this, <laughs> there's hundreds of yards of fish feeding. Yeah, yeah. And if they just drove offshore, they could be into giant fish, yeah. including tuna. There's literally tuna. Off there. There's just one little school that was happened to be close enough for me to cast into. So I was really upset and they just, they just did not understand. Yeah. And we got I'm the at, whole you know, ocean here. The are. whole ocean's behind you. I was like, yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> yeah. So it was, it was a brutal, it was very oh. brutal and very frustrating where yeah. I ended up catching maybe two or three bass that day from that spot, but only one out of the school of actual feeding fish yeah. where like, you know, if, if that boat didn't run over the top, right. Of it, maybe I, I probably would have had three, four or five, fish yeah. that were all in the 40 inch range i, know, know, I like the way yeah if they didn't get disturbed but yeah it was it was frustrating for sure i like the way you said uh that uh you know the boat came home immediately those fish dove i was out with uh charlie the wolf of rhode island rest in peace I was also out with bruce bain that night and uh we were fishing me and bruce had gotten there first charlie 
had come a little later, but we can hear as he's walking by the wall over there. <clears throat> we hear yelling, what the heck are you guys doing? Get the hell. And I'm like, what's going on? And Bruce goes, oh, no, we're in trouble. <laughs> so we were supposed to wait because Charlie came down there and was trying to tell us just what you're telling us. Dude, you're going to spook the fish. You're going to spook the fish. Mm. One little thing's going to spook the fish, and then they're gone for the night. Mm. So these are little things that you have to know out there, and I only brought it up because of what you said when the boat ran over. You can spook these fish, and you can lose your chance to uh, mm. gain a big fish when the time is right. As Finn was on them, you know, good thing you got on to one at least. Mm. But yeah. uh, you could have been a couple of more there. Could have been a 40-pound fish waiting for you right there. Easily. Yeah. I mean, there was, I was watching some bass offshore that were all of 40 pounds jumping out of the water. I mean, big heads and backs on these right. fish and they're feeding really aggressively. So, and they're on adult pogies, which are, are big bait. So most of the bass were over 40 inches that were right. on those, on those fish. And it was just, it was very unfortunate, but as you're saying, like, you know, in a school of fish like that, that's feeding. If you have a boat and you want to catch those fish, what I suggest doing is driving up to them and turning your motor off yeah. and then gliding up to the school. Yeah. Because if you drive over the top of the school with your motor running, yeah. it will disturb the bait and the fish and they'll go down. Yeah. And you have a way better chance of just, if you can turn your motor off, trim it up and just glide into the school of getting into those fish. But it, you know, if there's somebody also on shore fishing, it's, you know, you kind of want to respect their, their space and, and give them a wide berth when you're in a boat, regardless of if the fish happen to be in front of them or not. Right. It's just kind of, you know, it's common courtesy, especially yeah. in a place like Cape Ann where there's so many, so much water to fish sure. and there's very little access from shore. Yeah. It's just, there's a lot of compounding. I have to uh, ask you, so brutal. I didn't ask you, and this is very important. I know today people go out and they buy lures. Sometimes the lure that you're, you know, that you're buying might not be the toughest hook out there. Uh, you gain on the fish and the hook bends. It happened to me when I was out there, right there in the waters. I lost a very yeah. big fish that day because the fish, the uh, treble hook, the, uh, the hook bent out. But yep. what I want to say is, do you change your hooks? I mean, do you go buy a lure and you instantly say, hey, I got to put my hooks on? Because then again, remember, we are wanting that big fish. You have to think logically. If you want that big fish and you really believe in it, you got to change your hooks. Tell me a little bit about that. What are your favorite hooks to use when you're changing your hooks? Yeah, so I use two main lures when I'm changing my hooks on my plugs. I use the uh, BKK uh, Viper 41s. Nice. And I I like those over the Raptor BKK hooks. I've, I mean, people say they're both great. I've had, I fish a ton of top water and I've had so many bass just not get hooked by the Raptor hooks for whatever reason. And so I've just like, I, I'm sure they're great hooks and I'm sure if the bass actually get hooked by them, then like, that's great. And I've had people say that they're actually more for like swimming plugs, like a minnow style plug or sure. a metal lip or a glide bait. Something like that would like work better with a Raptor hook. Uh, but as far as like the hooks go, the, the uh, BKK uh, Viper 41 hooks are, are great hooks. They're very strong and they're a little bit lighter hook than the other hook that I use, which is the owner, yeah. um, ST 66. And that I like to throw on. And those are like really big beefy hooks. And I'll throw those on big spooks or big metal lips where the hook weight, maybe being a little heavier than the right. stock hook that would come with the plug doesn't affect the action that much and yeah. then i just want the most beefy powerful hook that yeah. i can put on a plug and and those uh owner sd66s are pretty crazy how beefy they yeah. are it takes work guys it takes work to become that good fisherman that you want to become and you say i want to become a good fisherman this is a part of it uh remember the um the plugs the lures that you're buying, they, you know, these companies and these people putting these things together, I'm not trying to say they're doing anything bad, but they have to make money and, excuse me. Oh, oh my oh, goodness, that was terrible. Was. Sorry about that. <laughs> excuse me, everybody. But the hooks that you're putting on that come with it are not that strong. And if you're really serious and you're out there to go out to catch the big fish, Bill Wetzel has a whole thing on changing hooks. Uh, change your hooks. Put on the bigger hooks. This way, when that time does come, 
you won't have that problem I I did where the hook uh, just uh, bent out on me. And it wasn't like I don't change my hooks. I didn't change my hooks on the lures that I should have changed. If you think you're going to go to a certain spot and you think you're going to go to a certain time and you know you're going to lo- use these certain plugs, plastics, whatever it is, make sure you know that the hooks that you have on are satisfactory to that. If you catch that big fish, you're going you're gonna to be able to bring him in. Uh, i like to say thank you to a few people. Striper Hunt, thank you so much for joining tonight. I think also Church Wood also became a member. Thank you so much. I appreciate you guys. I appreciate everybody for helping us out. I'll always strive to bring you guys the best, such as tonight we have Finn Hawley on. That's a striped bass hunt. I really enjoy having people on who know their uh, their product. And uh, the product we're talking about is surf fishing tonight. So, uh, again, so you work with uh, Pumba Lures uh, Company. Uh, tell me a little bit about him also. I know he makes a good stuff. Bruce, I had told you that I spoke to Bruce Bain about him, and Bruce had nothing but the best things to say about Mr. Pumba. You want to talk to us a little bit about him? Yeah, so so Joe Dion makes it from Pumba Plugs. He has a custom plug company, and he creates environmentally friendly plugs where he and all of his packaging is all paper products. So it's all biodegradable wow. and the epoxy and everything he uses is all biodegradable. And, and so it's just great for the environment when you have a lot of those like single use plastics. And not only that, you know, he also has really nice plugs that I really believe in his, uh, Magnum Walker is one of his bigger spooks that he he's made, and and that plug is one of my favorite plugs to this day. And and he and that plug in general catches some of the biggest fish I've ever caught. Nice. And it's just he makes really quality plugs that do catch really big fish, and that's what really it comes down to. And so, yeah, I mean, it's the fact that it's an environmentally friendly plug as well as it just makes me feel good about fishing it. Yeah, I got that. Uh, Ed, Ed Point says, good luck getting a BBK out of your hand. That's for sure. Oh, yeah, I know sure. last year, I think it was, uh, I forgot. I think it might have been you who uh, got a, uh, a hook uh, in his uh, hand. I think it was him. I don't Ed, remember. Ed, Ed Point? Yeah, I think it was last year. Was it a you, Ed Point? I don't remember. Last year, you had to go for surgery or something because of where the hook went in your hand. Anyhow, I know you're better now. You're oh. back fishing. And Ed Point <laughs> makes a... Beautiful uh, uh, surf fishing bag, quite a few bags, single tube, two tube, three tube bags. Check him out. We'll leave a link on the bottom. Uh, I like advertising on people's products that are good. If they're bad, I'm probably not going to say anything. I'm not going to take down somebody's business. And not that I could, but uh, say anything wrong about somebody's business who works so hard at it and loves his uh, product. So... No bad mouth in any uh, buddy stuff. I don't have any bad things to say anyway. Most of the stuff I get is all good. And uh, again, at point, thank you so much. You make an excellent product. Thank you for your support to my channel also. Go ahead, honey. What were you going to say? Uh, no, let's see. I don't know if we uh, Finn covered this. Wormway was asking Finn what's his favorite rod. Yeah, we, we talked yeah, we about that a little, a little bit early. in the beginning. Yeah. He wasn't on. Uh, total knob fishing. Okay, this looks like a bit half joke, but it says, ask Finn why he hates on SP Minnows. I don't know about him hating on anything, but let's <laughs> talk about this. Oh, you do? Bit. All right, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead, bit. talk about it. So I've made a video kind of trying to bait people to get a little upset about it because everyone starts out, including me, start out using SP Minnows because yeah. they're a fantastic plug that catches a lot of fish. Yes. But the thing that SP, SP Minnows do not great is they uh, they don't catch a lot of really big fish. Uh, and there's a lot of other minnow plugs out there that, that do catch big fish. And I'm not saying that you can't catch a big fish on a minnow plug because you can definitely catch big uh, – you can definitely catch really big bass on SP minnows specifically. But what I see a lot of surf casters, especially newer surf casters doing – and again, I was totally one of these people doing the same thing. So I'm not saying anything that I didn't already do. But – I was so stuck using SP minnows and there's a a few things that they do to anglers that are, are newer. And one of which is they make you fish way faster than you should be. They work when you're reeling them really, really quick. 
And right. so a lot of newer anglers will then start reeling a lot of their lures really fast. And a lot of lures don't work that well when, they, when they're reeling it really fast. So it makes it really difficult for you to get good fundamentals when it comes to surf casting when you're using this lure over and over and over again. Sure. When in many scenarios, I, and part of what I was saying in, in the video where I was talking about this, yeah. there's almost always a better plug to throw than a minnow plug, than a SP minnow specifically. There's yeah. very, very few scenarios where you're trying to match a profile, profile of bait or like there's a specific water depth and there's really like strong winds maybe in your face. Like I'm, I'm trying to think of times where it would even be more beneficial to throw um, uh, SP minnow than any other plug, but one is right. when there's sand deals around, like they, they mimic sand deals yes. really well. So like, so that, so those were very niche specific times to use them, but I wouldn't say they're a plug that you want to overuse too much. And I think that a lot of people get stuck using them over and over and over again, cause they're a confidence plug. Good fishermen think alike. And what do I mean? Here's a little thing that he just said, and I hope you caught that the SP minnow mimics the sand deal uh, very nicely. And he's right. I'm not talking about a giant SP minnow. A nice five, six inch SP minnow, seven inch. Yeah. You put it on, and I know Bill Wetzel loves using SP minnows around the time of June, which is the birth of the sand deal. That first moon in June mm -hmm. usually brings up those uh, sand deals. And we were out fishing very hard one night on SP minnows. We got a few fish that night. Nothing big, but we did get on the fish. We did find the sand deals that night. I'll never forget that night when he called me over to the rock, and he's like, look, and you see sand deals stuck all over the rock from the waves crashing up against them. And then you look down on the shore, and there they were. Thousands upon thousands, tens of thousands of sand deals, and five inches, uh, excuse me, five feet in. No exaggeration. It was so weird casting out. You were just under, you know, underhanding it and just popping it out there. They were all boiling over there, the stripers. Nothing big, but it was a great time that night. Hunting the striped bass, knowing what to hunt, what bait they're chasing is also a plus. Uh, out in your area, I know that you guys have the, uh, uh, I, I, the in the mornings, I remember we had the, um, uh, what were we getting them on that morning? I forget. On the sabika, yeah, we were getting the mackerel on the sabika rig that morning, and we were snagging them, you know, live lining them. It was a great time. As far as you, do you do any any fishing like that where you snag or? Um, I I definitely it is very fun to snag a drop uh, pogies. I've done that before. I've done it off of boats. I've done it once or twice from shore as well. Right years ago but yeah like it, it that's a fun way of doing it and probably if you just want to catch a big big fish there's no better way than sabiki rigging up mackerel or snagging a, a pogey and casting it back into a pogey school uh that's one of the best ways to catch the biggest fish you can imagine yeah. if that's all you want to do is catch the biggest fish possible and you don't care how you do it you know i know i know people are like if i could use dynamite and it would help me catch a giant bass i would like if you're one of those people then hey you know like just do whatever you want um I think, I think, and so yeah. yeah i i personally don't do that though yeah, very I, very rarely will i like chunk or anything like that i think, I don't we think have i've a, done it in years a couple of subscribers that definitely like to use dynamite uh <laughs> but, but not on the fish i think it's bank robberies we're talking here but that's another story other than that, uh, I was going to say D-Bar uh, said something nice. Use SPs and swim shads when searching for fish. Uh, can anybody tell me why he's saying that? Because remember, SP minnows go deep. Also, the swim shads uh, go deep. So basically what he's saying is the fish that are on the bottom that are hanging out down there. I know I've been taught... Uh, you know, nice, slow, super slow reels, especially if you're fishing in the winter times. The fish are very, very lethargic. They're not going to go chasing anything. It has to be basically right in front of their face so this way they can open up their mouth, put on the Hoover vacuum cleaner, and hopefully you'll get a nice fish. <laughs> but uh, Yeah, I mean, SP Minnows, you, he's also probably saying, like, you can cast them a mile, and they, they cast fantastic. So he's probably talking also about covering water with them being able to cover a ton of water and see, you know, if there's any fish around in the yeah. area. 
And again, like there's definitely ways that you can, you can use SP minnows, but then you have other plugs like bucktails or you have needle fish where you can do a cover, a lot of water and, and cast fart even further than SP minnows half the time. So I, my whole point of that video is more just like trying to get people to branch out and fish new plugs and, and fish slower and fish different plugs. The striper hunts asking, what does Finn think about North Bar Bottle Darter? The North Bar Bottle Darter? Yeah. I don't think I fished the Bottle, bottle Darter. Uh, I, I actually really do like the North Bar Darter, though. I fished uh -huh. that a bunch this year, and it doesn't cast that well, uh -huh. especially the plastic one. There, used, there is wooden one, like uh, custom wood ones, which I think are really hard to get your hands on nowadays. But... The plastic one, they do work fantastic and catch big fish. Uh, I've hooked some really nice bass in them, but you can only cast them like 15 feet if there's any sort of wind yeah. blowing in your face. <coughs> Excuse me. David Matthew, how you doing, buddy? Good to see you. David Matthews also says, David Anson, a Anderson made a good video on how to get SPs to suspend under the water. So if you like your, uh, your SP to just suspend under there, it's a nice video there to uh, check out, teach you something new. Or if you know it already, you don't have to watch that video. You can keep watching my show here and enjoying yourself. But I'd like to thank everybody out there for coming to the show tonight. I know it's a tough one tonight. Uh, Mike Patrick, how you doing? Bruce Bain, The Striper Hunt, Out Shallow, Outfitters, The Striper Hunt. We got Wormway, D-Bar, Brian C. What's up, buddy? We'll be having you on the show in a few weeks. John McDowell. Congratulations on that week. Delco Joe, always a pleasure. Delco Joe is going to have his competition. It's coming up April uh, 4, 5, and 6. I will be down there with my wife. I cannot wait to go. It's going to be held down in Delaware. We will put a link uh, to Delco Joe's site, uh, Delco Joe's uh, Instagram page, so you can check it out. It's, uh, it's not very expensive, guys. It's $25 to get into the competition. And also you get $25, you go to the barbecue. And then we're not talking about a barbecue of just a burger and a hot dog. We're talking a barbecue that is a barbecue. <laughs> so it's going to be a good time. I can't wait for that. The dates again are for, uh, I think it's five, six, seven, Joe. Can you tell me those dates again? It's in Philly. Sorry about that, Joe. Yeah, but I'll be there. Can't wait for that. It's going to be a good time. Outcast, how you doing? Outcast fishes out in Montauk. Outcast fishes with a lot of the legends out there. Always a, a good guy. Always gives me his time. I appreciate you, Outcast. Thank you so much for supporting me. Anybody else out there, we take donations. That's the way we work it here. Uh, and if you want to join the membership, it's $3 a month. Please don't call me up like somebody did and said, look, Mr. P, I love your show. But, you know, $300 a month, a lot of money. So I'm looking at him. I'm like, no, 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 it's $3, buddy. $3, not $300 a month. But uh, Delco Joe, it's 5, 6, and 7, April 5th, 6th, and 7th. It's a Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Again, I'm going to leave a link on the bottom of this video. You can check it out. It's going to be a great time. Last year's prize, I think, first prize was $5,000, guys. So he puts everything back into what he's getting, back into the prize money. Thank you, Joe. Uh, I can't wait to come up for that. Uh, going to be a good time, no doubt about it. Finn, uh, to end this uh, slowly, uh, anything else you'd like to talk about? Say anything? Um, yeah, I mean, thanks for having me back on. It was yeah. it's awesome time as always. And um, the only thing I really have going on is I have two seminars coming up this winter, which I'm I'm really excited about. I got one of them coming up. On the 20th of February, this is going to be taking place at the uh, Andover Memorial Hall Library at 7 p.m. It's going to be on uh, surf casting and ever-changing striped bass fishery. And then I have another seminar that's on March 23rd. This is for the Plum Island Surf Casters Show on the 26th. Right. And I'm going to be talking about trophy topwater fishing so i'm super excited about both of those and yeah that's basically all i really got going on this winter so yeah looking yeah. forward to that uh also my wife's gonna read off one more time for this weekend show which is the go ahead honey so that is surf day this saturday february 17 from 8 30 a.m to 4 p.m at brookdale community college 
Lincroft, New Jersey. That's the Jersey Shore Surf Casters Surf Day. And uh, in case you missed it, he read off the lineup that they're having there. Really, really good lineup. Yeah, some superstar uh, guys are going to be speaking there. It's a big show yep. down there, guys. It's not a little show. Mm. They're expecting well over a thousand people there to show up. So it's going to be over eighty vendors. I'll be one of the vendors there. How you doing? I'm not selling anything, but anyhow, <laughs> I'll be there, guys. No doubt about it. Uh, and we'll uh, link their Facebook page. You could find Surf Day. It's called Surf Day, the Jersey Shore Surfcasters. Awesome, All guys, show up. On Come on down. It's going to be a good time. Saturday. Can't wait for that. Back to Finn Hawley. Finn, uh, again, anything else you want to finish this up with? I know. Uh, uh, that's it. Th again, that's yeah. It. Thanks yeah. for having me on. It was Thank awesome you. time. Thank, Thank you, Finn. You, uh, Finn. It's always a pleasure, and I really mean that. Thank you for coming Thank to so my much. show. Guys like you make my show reparable. I appreciate yeah. that very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, I hope to have you back again. Uh, we're sure. not going to have you back here next week. People will get very bored very quickly like that. <laughs> but I definitely will have you back again. And we'll hear some good stories. And definitely on the hunt for the Florida fish, the, uh, I forget names, so so bad. What, tarpon. The Florida the fish? Tarpon, there you go. <laughs> Thank you for that, buddy. Awesome. And we'll see you on the hunt what's going on with that fish for you. Uh, I'll always uh, follow uh, your stuff on YouTube, everybody. And remember, he's got the new broadcast channel you can join and uh find out things on there and there's two seminars coming up uh nice. we'll leave a link to his uh channel this way you guys can get all the latest straight from him there thank you everybody for coming awesome. to the show uh as far as a giveaway this week we're not going to do the uh giveaways this week here okay but what Just i'm going to do is i got to show you yeah because because it's a super bowl <laughs> i don't know what that means but anyway <laughs> Well, I am going and to give away the uh, lure. I'll be posting this. Let's do this one right here. Wait a second. Oh, for next week. Yeah, for next week. Okay. All right. Okay. So I'm going to give away two. I'm going to give away the uh, Fight Lures Company. This is a beautiful little uh, lure here. These are great down in Jersey. A lot of times you got the peanut bunkers down there. Uh, really, really uh, be beautiful uh, stuff here. That uh, bright green. Uh, lime on the bottom, a little lighter. Just a beautiful glider there you can use. And then we got Guppy Lures. I bought this up at the show. This is the smaller one. I gave away the bigger one a few weeks ago. This is called a mini flat. This is a two and three eighths ounce. So guys, I'll be posting this on uh, the uh, Instagram. Look out for it. During you can leave, yeah, during the week, leave a comment. Tag three buddies. The reason I ask you to tag three buddies Maybe we can get some extra subscribers to the uh, channel. So I'll be posting these up, and next week we will announce the winner nice. on that uh, show. So thanks again, everybody, for coming. Again, Finn, you are the man. Thank you so thanks much. Thanks for having me. Enjoy your fishing, and uh, we'll talk uh, very soon again. Guys, I'll see everybody real soon. Be at the show this Saturday. See you later, guys. See you, everybody. Take Good night, easy. everybody. Bye.